We now turn to chapter seven, which is uh, matrix examples. And we'll look at a bunch of matrices that come up in applications. Um, it's just to give you an idea of what matrices that, uh, what, what matrices arise in practice, what they look like. And also in many cases, we'll look at things like what does a row mean or a column or what does matrix vector multiplication uh, mean? Because that'll always be interesting depending on the application. So we'll start with geometric transformations. So a lot of geometric transformations uh, in 2D or 3D uh, can be represented via matrix multiplication. So that looks something like this, just Y equals AX. A is, you think of A as a matrix that carries out uh, the geometric transformation. So here's an example. Consider the mapping or transformation that rotates a vector by theta radians. So here's a vector X and it gets rotated over to uh, theta radians. It's got the same, same norm, but it's been uh, rotated and it's been rotated by theta radians. Uh, and of course, in the mathematically positive direction, uh, that means uh, counterclockwise. Okay, so that's a, that's a rotation mapping. Um, and it turns out it has the form y equals ax. Now, to get, uh, to get the entries of a, uh, there are lots and lots of ways to do it. But a very simple one is to do things like this. When you have uh, y equals ax, if x is equal to e1, the first unit vector, then y is going to be the first, it's going to be the first column of a. So, for example, if I took e1, that's this vector here, um, and I rotate it by theta radians, I get to this, this vector. And sure enough, this distance is the cosine of theta. That's our first entry here. And this height here is sine theta, and that's here, okay? And to get the second column, we look at A, E2. So remember that when you have a matrix A and you multiply by E2, the second unit vector, what you get is the second column. So let's take E2, E2 is this vector, and we rotate it, theta radians, whoops, my mistake, that's a little bit too long, but there we go. <coughs> so we take that, and then we say, what, what are the coordinates of that vector? Well, the uh, x coordinate, or x1 coordinate here, is going to be minus the sine theta, and so there you go, that's that one. And then the height here, of this thing, here, over, over here, is going to be cosine theta. And so that gives you this thing. And by the way, a matrix like this is called a rotation matrix for obvious reasons, because it rotates vectors by theta radians. Okay, this is just one example. There are a couple of others. Uh, if you take a look in the book, you'll see more. Uh, for example, reflection through a plane, things like that. Uh, and rotation matrices are used in lots and lots of applications, uh, in mechanics, uh, in um, lots and lots, lots of areas, uh, in graphics, for example, when you're uh, working out, you know, what does something look like from a certain angle. Okay. The next uh, big group of examples we're going to look at uh, is pretty generic. It, it's called selectors. And I'll tell you what a selector is. So a matrix uh, is a selector if each of its rows has exactly one one and all other entries are zero. Now another way to say that is that each row is a unit vector uh, transposed. So here's a selector. I'll just make one for you like this, uh, right? So there you go, okay? So there's a there's a three by three selector matrix. And if I multiply this by x1, x2, x3, that's a vector, what, I, what comes out is, that's x3, because I'm just going across here and down here, then I get x1 and I get x3. And what it says is, if you think of this as y, and y equals ax, then what AX gives you is each entry of that, if that's Y, each entry is one of the X's. So each, what it is, is it's selecting, an, an, it's selecting from the entries of X, right? They can be repeated. So for example, here, X3 shows up there and it also shows up there. So uh, that's how that works. Um, and so multiplying by uh, A, a vector, uh, basically selects different entries. Okay, so here's a, here's a, a practical example from if you like signal processing or time series, um, here's the matrix A. And it's an M by 2M matrix, and it looks like this. Um, lots of ways to interpret it. Um, so the first row is E1 transpose. The second row is E3 transpose. The third is going to be E5 transpose, and so on. So if you imagine what happens when you multiply this by a vector X, here's what you get. Um, it will take 
the first entry in the first component of AX, then it will take X3, that's the third entry of X, then X5, and so on. And so, for example, if X was a time series, uh, then this would be referred, the slang would, is you would say that the time series has been downsampled to X, meaning I'm taking the first, the third, the fifth, the seventh, and so on. Um, and so that's, that's what that, so you would be able to look at that matrix and say, ah, that represents, if you multiply it by a vector, that's downsampling, for example. Um, but this comes up all over the place uh, in a lot of image processing. You'd get the same thing like image cropping would be a selector, right? So if I have an image represented by a big long vector and I want to uh, do things like crop to some smaller portion of it, I'm just selecting uh, various pixels. And again, it would be, A would be a selector matrix. Okay, so this will come up. Um, we'll see this in a lot of applications.